You may be under the impression that the idea of swapping batteries in EVs to recharge them quickly is an idea that's already come and gone. Wasn't going to work. But a startup I'm going to introduce you to here in San Francisco says that's because it wasn't done right. Let's meet Ample. Now the key to the Ample system is this big metal frame you see under here, which is essentially an adapter. This is where the factory battery was. Here you've got a robot coming in and doing the essential work of a battery swap at an Ample station. It's reaching up here into this conversion sort of adapter interface that they put on the car, which replaced the factory battery. And now you've got a series of trays it's about to undo one right now with these electronic servo lockers. It's, it's undoing right now. There we go. This is where they hit this interesting middle ground of a monolithic big battery like car makers do on one end of the spectrum or a completely customizable little granular battery that wouldn't be practical either. This is a middle ground that allows them to be semi-custom and semi-common across a large industry. What's key about this system is that they're not taking the factory battery and replacing it with another giant battery that every car maker would have to agree to use. The logic here is that it's a lot easier to build some kind of a custom interface for every electric car, but then fill that interface with standardized battery units that this charging center robot knows exactly what to do with. By the way, if you're wondering how they charge these, that's done on site at each location like we see behind me here. And you might say, wow, they must fast charge them so they can have plenty of them ready all the time. Not necessarily. They're charged at what's roughly a level two charge rate, not unlike what you might have at home in your own garage. Ample co-founder and president John D'Souza says the vision of universal everywhere you go, super fast charging is still overhyped. When we started this uh, eight years ago, people told us, look, next day we'll start having 350 kilowatt chargers. Eight years later, people tell us the next day we'll have 350 kilowatt chargers. People are not building them because they cost a lot. There are very few cars that take them. The people don't want to build the cars because there are no chargers. And they're stuck in this and they're energy inefficient. So fast charging is great for some people, but it won't solve all the problems. The reason there's no rush is because they instead algorithmically balance the number of batteries they need for projected number of customers in a day. And not using DC fast charging means that the batteries inside here, the cells, last longer. So let's say you just need to get a half a charge. You just need to replace half of these trays, not the whole giant thing like some previous swap technologies envisioned. Another interesting idea is the batteries come out easily to be changed up for fresher ones, newer technology ones, ones that aren't defective. You can't do that with big batteries very easily, if at all, and certainly not cost effectively. They'll all come in within a week and we can swap them all out. Historically, car makers would have a not invented here disinterest in technologies like these, but D'Souza says he finds they whistle a different tune in this battery era. We're taking out a component, but often that component is not developed by them. It might be developed by some other company that delivers it to them. We'll actually not ask you to make any modifications to your car. <laughs> That's a huge one to say, let's keep it the way it is. And the second is our goal is to partner with you. We're not trying to sell anything to OEMs, but to sell a lot more vehicles. Even Ample admits at-home level two charging will be the answer for many electric car buyers. But then there are the others, for whom there is not a convenient charge waiting in the garage, and they have to go out and deal with the vagaries of the public charging network. So we're talking to people who have one car and they want that car to be electric. It means a lot to them, but they can't afford to, to take all the sacrifice that you have in charging. Technologies like these remind me of one of my favorite mantras around the EV industry. It's not about bigger batteries and more range per charge. It's about making charging more fluid, tailored to the kind of driving each vehicle owner actually does, and doing that economically.